that skylight right next to it so you're drawn to the top of that frame you've also got a bit of that light that's playing across those two ladders and so they're also giving us a hint there by quickly flashing the screen back to gray which you might not have might have noticed you might not have noticed and then you get this flare that's happening at the moment which is ah you've done something right Hey there, welcome back to our 100 sub design run of Rise of the Tomb Raider. We've been just cruising through the levels, talking about a bunch of the different design decisions that have been made. It's been a bunch of fun and we're going to keep going. We'll do one more part and then I'll see how you guys like it. And then maybe we can do some more in the future. If you've gotten this far, you've probably already watched like an hour of me talking about this stuff. So let me know if you want any more down in the comment section below. Yeah, let's just, let's just keep going. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about this once again this frame so framing in these sorts of games is huge it sells the moment of certain things happening it sells a lot of information and it's not an easy thing to do but as with a little bit of consideration you can see how you can get a lot and you can still pack a you can still pack a lot of detail into a level without it seeming like you're framing stuff and you're doing it because well because you're doing it really really subtly and so in this example you've got this kind of like area in the middle that is lit up at the top of this temple which kind of that tells you essentially the light shows you that this is where you're you need to go and it's lit up so it's drawing your attention it's the only thing that's re super super reflective it's also got that skylight right next to it so you're drawn to the top of that frame you've also got a bit of that light that's playing across those two ladders so you can see it there's the bottom ladder you can see there's the top ladder you can see there's the shiny dome at the top that column of light down the middle is telling you more or less where you need to go then next to it on the left and the right hand side there's these two waterfalls that are falling down and they're creating a flat area of I wouldn't call it negative space, but essentially they're creating, while the the pillar in the middle, which is the little dome at the top and then the two ladders, that's got a lot of high detail and they're using the light to accent certain parts. And then so around it, they're putting these two waterfalls to create an area of really low detail, really flat, so that your eye is drawn to that middle part, but then it doesn't get lost in the detail of things around it. And then outside that, you can see this sort of arch in the middle which is around the outside of that, that flat area, which is where it leads back into, say, the pillars on the right-hand side. There's a bit of an arch at the top, and then the grates on the left-hand side leading back to this little waterfall in the left-hand side of the screen. And so you can see that you've got this kind of, like, negative space area in the middle with this detailed little column and pillars and stuff in there that is lit up by this light and they're achieving all of that kind of super super high detailed information that you can glance at that and see exactly what you need to do in a split second and it's all done by using framing and using these two waterfalls to give you that kind of flat and two sections of detail it's really really well done like it's really smart and then the other thing is we've already spoken about signifiers but why not let's talk about an affordance so we've got this little thing which is where we start back up which is this little ramp that you kind of are expected to jump off. Good little affordance there. I also want to talk about, well, because we haven't really spoken about any of the art yet, other than maybe that part there. I also want to talk about this waterfall, which I thought was really cool. Fairly standard way to do a waterfall, I guess. You've got, um, I'm, I, I, I'd say it's some flat geometry with a scrolling texture on it. And then if you get underneath it, does it do anything? No, you just stand inside it. Yeah, so it's just some flat geometry with a, with a texture on it that scrolls through. Uh, that's what creates that waterfall effect. You've then got, um, I like up the top, how they've obviously got water flowing down from this one particular area, but you can see that it's split up by these rocks so that you end up with several little streams rather than just one giant sheet of water falling down. But on those rocks, there's the little puffs of uh, water as the water from the top hits those rocks and breaks. You've got these little puffs of um, particles that are popping up from those rocks really well really well done really good attention to detail at the bottom you've got the obviously the splashing up particles as well so you've got two sets of particles here you've got one that's splashing up which is the um where the water's hitting and jumping up out of the water which are these little circular spherical like pops which are like these ones here and then you've got these circular flat um uh i don't know what you call it but it's 
I, I want to say turbulence, but it's not turbulence. It's um, it's the white river rapidy sort of water as the water churns that creates this these this area in real life, and then those fade out as they move down the area of this stream, so that you get this effect of these circles. But they're so dense that they just look like the water's just churning, which it's just it's a really nice, well thought out piece of art. I just want to talk about that. So anyway, back to this affordance. You've got uh, an area, you've got a little brick here, which sort of, and a little tree that when you, when you start here, if you turn to the right, you kind of, it's kind of uh, pointing you away from going down there. So you run here and then the designers <laughs> get an opportunity to put you into this nice little swan dive. Um, if we take a bit of a look around the area, again, you can see those two ladders are lit up. You've got that pallet that's lit up. You've got that ladder there that's lit up. Um, you've got this wall over here that's lit up, so they're using light to really effectively communicate to you exactly the elements that you need in order to be able to, um, to, to, to do this level without needing your survival instincts. Obviously, they've then obviously, oh, well, obviously they've given us that survival instincts tip because they've detected that we're taking a little while and we're not sure what we're doing, and then if we were to go into survival instincts, I can almost got guarantee you. To to get up higher. Maybe I can raise the water. There you go. So Lara tells you essentially what to do, and you've got this little objective marker here. But again, you've got that little palette there that's also um, shiny and uh, well, not really that. I was going to say that that top area, but I think that's just the light. So the objective markers change, so we go back over here. Again, it's lit up, we should know that. Um, and you've got that door there that's opening and letting water down in. So we can climb up here. Desecrating the remains of the dead. Because why else would you raid tombs? Okay, cool, and then we got here. So we know if we jump on this, something's gonna happen because it's marked by the survival instincts. But it's also the sensible place to jump off that that ledge up there. Okay, and now, so following the logical progression now, we have, um, we now have access to this area over here of the level, but we also have access to that first ladder. So if we just head over here, I'm guessing there's probably nothing over here. This is the sort of situation where you would um, check your map. So in here, you would check your map and you'd be like, oh, okay, there's some coins there and some coins there. Okay, cool. That gives me an idea of some things they could probably collect in this area. You can see that you get an objective marker uh, there and that's a tall beam of gold light and you get the uh, user set marker over there, which is a tall beam of blue light. And then maybe you would have a look around here. And if you got curious, as again, as I've said again, like there's all sorts of different collectibles here. And one of the things is these like level-based challenges. So if you shoot out these incense burners, you get this specific challenge that's based in just this area. So you can't, you can't go to somewhere else and find the incense burners. The seven incense burners in this area, and that's. This just for this area and there, there's different types of things later on in the game in different sections so I don't know maybe you should have to shoot some totems in another area or something like that I'm probably talking too much this probably isn't any fun to watch at all I'm a little conscious but hopefully I'm talking enough interesting stuff that you guys are having at least an, a half engaging time I'm always so conscious about this sort of stuff on my videos because yeah, I feel like it's always so boring, but I just love this stuff so much. It's just so interesting to me how, like, you walk out into that area and you can instantly see exactly what you want to do, like, from the frame at the start of the game because of how the designers have designed the space and the level designers have implemented the space and the artists have dressed up all the sets and the lighting people have come in and done the lighting just perfectly. It's insane. It's just... It's so good. So, uh, just in front of us, we've got another example of... They're telling us something about below here, because we've got these shafts of light coming up from the bottom. Test 
And so they're giving us. And so they're also giving us a hint there by quickly flashing the screen back to grey, which you might not have, might have noticed, you might not have noticed, but the screen goes completely grey to give you a big visual cue, and you get this like sign drop, slow motion bass noise of everything moving into slow motion, and then you're obviously in slow motion, so you get a couple of seconds to react to this which is the fall, floor falling away and revealing a spike trap. And so now we know that those shafts of light coming up from the bottom of the ground, or coming up from the ground, My are Lord. your... You uh, uh, let us know that there's something below and it's probably going to be a spike trap. And that little tooltip pops up and says spike trap and just reaffirms that for you. We jump here. You can see again how all, all the ledges that we're jumping on are this white color, just to confirm that. So we've got this ledge here, which is this white color. It's got white paint. And we've got that ledge there, which is like broken or chipped away stone. Uh, shoot this. Yeah, incense burner gets some. 25 experience. Um, yeah, so we'll just continue up around here. You can also see how the level's more or less telling you where to go. So we would, we were from from there. We only really had one area to jump up to, which was here, and then you know progression along from there. Um, a little bit less so here. You've climbed, you've climbed up here, and you've gone around there. You could there is more air, uh, level down this side uh, to have a look. And there's some, as we saw before on the map, there's some coins around the back here. But the the like by climbing up the ladder and climbing around the side of the building they show you that this is the next part and then obviously you had the opportunity to jump into survival instincts and then at the time the objective marker was down there and so once you've moved through that tunnel you can sort of see oh okay i need to jump up this side section where we were before once again the floors in the bottom whoop um there was that button on the ground which triggered that. Um, but so there is an example of they've taught us what one of those falling down spiky traps are. They've taught us what one of the floor falling away spiky traps are. And so now they've just thrown both of them at us in one hit to try and to try and throw us off, but also to keep that keep that intensity up a little bit. And also we've just been wandering around in the in the outside area for a bit and pulling walls apart to rise the level. So let's change it up a little bit. Let's give them something where it's time pressure and they need to get out of the road, otherwise they might die. So we'll throw a spike trap. And then we'll throw two of the fall down traps here. And it's also a little bit more intense than the previous one because you need to shoot two at a time. We come out here. Notice the audio. The audio is so, so important for games um, because it tells players so much and it's so subtle. At, or it can be really subtle or it can be really obviously in your face, but it's so good for telling players exactly what you want them to know. And so we walk out into this area and we get this kind of like, I don't know how you'd describe it, but I would say it was like a pan flute flare that was letting you know that it's kind of revealing something and so you come out and it's re you get the revealing sound and so we sort of we can have a bit of a look around and be like oh okay cool there's a rock here there's a tree there there's a pallet in front of me and then there's a pallet there and we know what we do with pallets here we shoot them down so we can have a bit of a look around and sort of work out what we're doing and then you get this flare that's happening at the moment which is Ah, you've done something right. You've kind of uh, discovered another part of the puzzle. And so you get this, like, discovery flare as well. Really wants me to use those survival instincts. Maybe that's because I'm playing on Tomb Raider. But it's probably just because it's early in the game. But yeah, so we saw if we jump on that, water comes out, the water level rises, and that pallet goes out, uh, goes down there. And so if we have a bit more of a look around the level, I actually know how to do the puzzle, so I don't have to think of this on the fly. But um, if we know that if we have to do the puzzle, again, great use of lighting. This is lit up. That was lit. The pallet was lit up. That is lit up. And what else is lit up if we look around here? Oh, this thing's, this thing's got a nice... Uh, warm glow to it, despite not really having a light source to to give it that nice yellow colour. But it, again, is just pointing us towards what we need to know, which is we need to break open this. 
to raise this water level up a bit further. And then we need to jump on this. Push that water down. So that we get this pallet, and then we jump off this pallet up here. Once again, the wall's letting us know that we need to wall scramble. Jump up here. And then, again, the paint. It's also lit up, but the paint on that bar lets us know that we can hang from that bar. And if we have a bit of a look around, it's one, the only real thing that's lit up that looks reasonable to jump on. And, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's the only thing that's lit up, and it's the only thing that looks reasonable to jump on. So, next thing, and it's painted. Let me jump on that one. Hit the extreme long shot to show you exactly where you are. And then we can zoom back in. And so now, because we've given you this long shot, you know that you're on that second ladder that we had for back at the start. And if we climb up, we've got context for where we're going. And we get to the goal that we were talking about at the start of the at the start of the this section, at the start of this part. Is we're finally up to the top of this dome that was illuminated from the start. And we touched all of the things that we mentioned as well that were illuminated. Um, again from the start of the level everything that was illuminated we've eventually crossed empty. it's empty no no what did i miss hey down here i'm pretty sure there's quite a bit of cutscene here so if you're not interested in the cutscenes um, Set the charges. Yeah, thanks for watching. But we'll watch through this cutscene and the next one, and then we'll finish it up. They always want to blow this stuff up. They always want to blow it up. After all this time. And the artifact? Inside. God will. Close up on his hand. Conveying information. Careful. It could be extremely dangerous. No, no, you open it. <laughs> That's nice. Who the hell are you? You're a smart woman. I suspect you already know. Trinity. Where is the artifact? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play games with me. You led us to this place. Look, it was empty when I got here. There was no body and definitely no artifact. And then we get our first taste of combat. And another set piece. I'm always amazed by how well coordinated this stuff can be. Like, the amount of time it must take to set everything up so that if you run a little bit, well, it's fine, but it's, as long as you run just far enough, well, that thing will explode and you'll fall onto that slide that I just went down. I got just so far enough that this pillar fell over to give me the opportunity to scramble up here. This is now falling over. Like, just the amount of coordination you would need. All the water, all the assets. Light at the end of the tunnel. See, like, all that. Just, like, the animation and the rocks. And... Oh. 
<laughs> Forgot to press X. Whoops, sorry. Didn't mean, didn't mean for that. Cut that out. We'll cut that out of the finished product. <laughs> At least we got to see a pretty cool death animation, which is fall down and then get full pillared underwater. What's this? Convenient. That's what that was. It's Jonah! Laura! There's so much I need to tell you, I don't... Did you find the Prophet's tomb? Yes, but I was followed. What? By who? They call themselves Trinity. They tried to kill me. What the hell is going on here? You're starting to scare me. Just a blase the about empty. it. Oh, they tried I to kill me. Looking for the divine source. The artifact your father was after? There's more. I found this symbol in the tomb. I knew I'd seen it before. It was driving me insane. That's when it hit me. I saw it here in one of Dad's books. Listen to this. The lost city of Katesh, said to have disappeared in Siberia sometime in the 12th century. Legend says that on the eve of the invasion by the Mongol horde, it sunk beneath a lake. What does this have to do with the Prophet's artifact? Exposition. The same symbol. <laughs> Laura. <laughs> if the divine it's not even that intricate, like as the symbol Katesh goes. Waiting to be found, then I have to go. Siberia? It's like something that someone would draw me? in their school book. Just think. At the back Just end of a boring math class. Really unlock the secret of immortality. It would, it would change everything. Sickness, suffering, death, gone. Are you listening to yourself? Oh, that would be pretty good, though. Jonah, we've been through so much together. You know there's more out there. This could be real. I don't care if it's real. I've lost too many friends. I don't want to lose you too. Dad never made the connection to Katesh. He gave up everything for this. Including you. Stop blaming yourself for what happened. He made his own bed. I can't give up on him. Not now. It's all I have. No, it isn't. If you stayed still for five minutes, maybe you'd see that. On your China. Shit, Laura. What are we gonna do? I led them to it, Jonah. If the divine source is real, we've got to find it first. Siberia it is, then. You have to admit, like, that whole scene, like, yeah, it would have been a huge amount of work in motion capture and someone having to clean all that data up because motion capture data comes in and usually it's really, like, just 
the information's a bit scrambled and you have to sort of spend some time cleaning it up. But fucking damn, like that's some high quality, like realistic looking action for a game. Like even this, like she's busting up and she's looking around and it all feels so real, like it's insane. Props so much. I know, again, like it's huge budget, like it's two hundred million dollars or whatever it was to, to make this game. It's a huge amount of money, and it's giving like there's going to be one guy or multiple guys on just mocap alone. But still, like it's it's such a technical achievement. It's amazing. Always blows my mind. Particularly if you jump into a little bit of like modeling yourself or if you jump into a little bit of animating or something like that Like if you're at a really base level and you haven't spent a heap of time doing it Jesus Christ like just to try and coordinate all of that and then everybody to do art and textures and environments and when she's fallen over things explode and you know like that sort of stuff like just insane so much time and effort and money for for that like outcome which but it just looks awesome it looks so good anyway this is the end of part three this is where i'm going to leave it for now if you want me to continue doing something like this we can do some more episodes in the future at some point when i get some time it's up to you guys if you just let me know down in the comment section if you liked it or if you didn't let me know if you didn't i want to hear from you too if you thought that there was something that you didn't like about it or if you if it was too slow if you just don't want me to do this and you want me to keep doing the uh, educational to tutorial essay sort of ish style videos um if you want me to talk less and you just want me to cruise through more if you want me to stop and talk about things or if you want me to like th this section we're going to talk about art and the next section we're going to talk about level design or something like that J yeah just talk to me in the comments let me know um we can do more in the future if you that's something that you guys want it's not going to take over the channel this isn't a let's play channel this isn't a, um a place where you come to watch me talk about uh, games in this fashion it's always going to be those educational videos that are like seven minutes long or something like that and uh, we'll, we can throw in some of this stuff every now and then if that's what you guys want let me know what you think um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and somehow managed to get through the end of this video thank you so much for watching maybe consider subscribing this is the same sort of vein of all the stuff that I do here on the channel if you are subscribed, thanks a bunch for watching, I appreciate it. Hopefully you've watched all three, which would be about an hour and a half of me talking into a microphone and slowly making it through probably like half an hour of gameplay. Uh, thanks a bunch, appreciate your time. And I guess I will see you next time I release one of the old style videos, which I guess will be sometime next week for the next... Uh, game design theory video, which may be another design, uh, another video on level design, as opposed to a normal game design theory video, because I'm punching out a bunch of smaller, more um, succinct videos on level design to try and build up a level design playlist. So thanks so much for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.